Chapter 35. Kuna's eyes bulged practically out, of, practically out of their head as they stared at me. Then they bared their teeth, shying back. What? They demanded. What is this? I was never a Lanique, I said. I took her place after she crashed on my planet. Then I stuck out my hand. My name is Spensa. You said you were waiting to hold out your hand to a human in peace. Well, here I am. It might have been the craziest thing I'd ever done. Honestly, I'm not sure I could explain why I did it. I just realized that I couldn't necessarily trust my gut when it came to aliens. Their habits, expressions, and mannerisms wouldn't match my expectations. This was different, though. This wasn't me reacting by instinct to something an alien did. This was a choice. If there was ever a chance that Kuna was sincere, it could mean an end to the war. It could mean safety for my people. I wasn't certain if this was what the heroes from Grand Grand Stories would have done, but it was what I did in that moment taking that risk, accepting that hope. Kuna, though they leaned back at the same time, took my hand in theirs. I guessed that part of them reviled the idea of touching me, or I guessed that that part of him reviled the idea of touching me. Still, they did force themselves to do it. Kuna might use terms like lesser species, but I believed that they were sincerely trying. They looked at me closer, still holding onto my hand. How? I don't understand. Holograms, I said, a portable one in my bracelet. We don't have technology to create a projector so small, Kuna said, but it was rumored that, that the humans did during the first war, during their alliance with the figments. Amazing. The communications from Alanique's home planet, do they know about you? I told them, but I don't know that they believe me. I've mostly been stalling them. Amazing, Kuna repeated. You mustn't show anyone else. It could be a disaster. They pulled their hand back and, it seemed unconsciously, wiped it on their robes. I tried not to be offended. You are from the Shell Planet, Kuna asked, with the defensive platforms? Detrius, I said, yeah. I fought for you until I was hoarse, Kuna said, in the closed Senate meetings when there were arguments for extermination. I didn't believe you're standing here talking to me? Amazing. You've been on Starsight for weeks. Have you, um, have you killed anyone? By accident, I mean? No, I said, we're really not like that. Mostly, I've spent my time here trying to figure out which of the 17 restrooms I'm supposed to use. Do you know how confusing that can be without some instructions? Kuna drew their lips back to a line. I smiled back. They walked around me. Truly spectacular. We have watched you all these years, but know so little. The interference those platforms cause, you see. Still, we blasted you into what was practically a stone age, and less than a century later, you already have hyperdrives again. I'm not sure whether to be impressed or intimidated. Right now, let's call it a draw, I said. I touched my bracelet, turning my hologram back on so I looked like Alanik again. Kuna, Winsick is crazier than you think. Braid told me some of his plans. They're trying to recruit Alanik to join some kind of secret cytonic group they have. They think they can control the Delvers. Surely you exaggerate, Kuna said. The program we've developed uses a weapon to distract Delvers. Our analysis proves that if they go too long in our realm without consuming a planet, they eventually fade. What we will try to do is not so much control them as keep them distracted from population centers long enough that they leave us. Yeah, well, there's more, I said. You're not the only one worried about the superiority losing control once everyone knows about hyperdrive slugs. Winsick plans to use the threat of a Delver attack to keep everyone in line. Kuna bared their teeth. If this is true, they said, then I have a great deal more work to do. But you needn't worry. Our program is just in the beginning stages. I will search for the truth and move to counter Winsick's political aspirations. He is not so powerful yet that he cannot be stopped. All right. I'll see what I can do to get the human scourge to back down. I can't let you take that drone. At least let me take the sensor unit I installed, I said. My ship needs that. I looked to Kuna. Please, let me go, Kuna. I'll fly back to Detrius and persuade my people that someone among the Krell is willing to talk about peace. I think they'll listen. What would happen to Winsick's power if suddenly his department wasn't needed? What if the human scourge became an ally to the superiority instead of an enemy? There is a long way to go for that to happen, Kuna said. But yes, I can imagine it. A deal then between you and me. Kuna hesitated, then put their hand out toward me again. Or a deal to perhaps make a deal. I took it. Then I pulled my lips to a line. Kuna, in turn, smiled. Well, it was kind of a smile, a worthy effort anyway. I retrieved the sensor and hologram unit I'd attached to the drone and put them in my flight suit pockets, but left the drone itself in the backpack. Kuna led me to the door, and I tried not to think about the poor alien who had been ex exiled. 
I couldn't let myself feel responsible for what had happened to them. I just had to do what I could. What would happen if we really did make peace? Would that mean no more need for starfighters? I found that difficult to believe. The Dovers were still out there, right? There would be battles. There were always battles. It still felt a little odd to have me, of all people, be the one who took the first steps toward peace. I can take you by shuttle to your embassy, Kuna said, walking me through the security door to the open air. Then I can fill out the proper paperwork, indicating that Alamik is returning to her people. I don't know how we'll make this work after that, but... Kuna trailed off as a military shuttle. It looked like the same one we'd flown therein, zipped down out of the air, and landed with a hasty thump right in the middle of the grass, ignoring the farther launch pad. The door slammed open, but no one was inside. I immediately smelled cinnamon. Hurry, Vapor's voice said. Alanik, we've been mobilized. What? I demanded. Mobilized how? Our flight is being sent into battle. I think a Delver has been spotted.